Hello ladies and gentlemen, yes, Zeke here again today to bring you a late night broadcast of The Binding of Isaac, and I may be a bit quieter than usual because I don't want to wake anyone up and my girlfriend is sleeping next door, and I probably should have closed the door to this house. It is currently about 6 in the morning, and I decided that today I'm going to play as Kane. And the first item I got is an item I unlocked last run, which was the Horror of Babylon. If you guys don't remember or you didn't watch the last episode, I actually restarted, reset all my save data. So Kane comes with a slight damage boost and a fairly large speed boost as well as luck up. So he cannot have bad pills, which is a pretty big advantage starting out as I did mention, because pills can really make or break a game, especially if you focus on getting them. And we also didn't have a bomb to start and I'm not gonna use this bomb here because I think that will give me the tinted rock and the rock. So. Nice damage upgrade there, always be on the lookout for Tinted Rocks because you're much more likely to get a damage upgrade if you find one. So moving on to the next couple rooms here, I'm in cellar part 1 so I could fight Pin on the first floor. And I had somebody tell me that Pin was their least favorite boss. The only reason Pin is hard at all is because he is on the early floors. If he wasn't, you would have a power up or two already and it would be super super easy. So I am going to search for the secret room as I do have two bombs, but sometimes the secret room doesn't actually go where it's supposed to on the first floor. Fortunately, I was lucky this time. And I have... oh. Okay, so I got an extra heart. I have one bomb here. I'm going to blow this up in hopes of getting a few more cents. Two more cents at a key. Probably worth it. I'll likely get two more cents on the next floor, so I have the ability to visit the shop. And actually, I'm going to visit the shop here just in case. 9 volt probably would have been great, but instead I'm going to pick up this spirit heart and this pill and see if the pill's anything good. Speed up? Okay, could always use extra speed up. Have high damage, have high speed. I'm already red tears as you might notice. Like I said, Kane does start with a slight damage upgrade over Isaac and I'm fighting the Widow, which is a fairly easy first pick as for a boss, despite it currently just standing there and spawning spiders like a complete dick. Um, the only reason I could get away from that is because of the speed up that the pill gave me. So again, showing the importance of getting those early pills and all the pills being good. <laughs> this is a lot more laid back than my usual Let's Play style. Uh, it's because I'm trying not to make noise. So I got a range up as well. Not ideal, but you know, it is quite useful for those enemies that you can just outrange and kill easily. Or if you want to stay away from enemies, which you always kind of do in this game. So I'm not too far in the game and I just spent a bunch of money. Um, a bit of that money went towards a stat upgrade, which is always worthwhile. So a stat upgrade and a spirit heart for under 10, for 10 cents is a pretty good deal, but I am pretty low on money again. Not to mention I only have one key. So I'm going to want to be exploring this whole floor. Thankfully that guy blew him up, blew himself up super quick, so took care of a lot of the work for me here. And believe it or not, these are some of my least favorite first floor enemies because they just avoid you like the goddamn plague and their dodging AI can sometimes be surprisingly good. There's two um, aggressive flies spawned there, shouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna move on to the next room. I love coming across champions in early floors because they are usually champions of super easy enemies. Um, Meat Boy Wannabe being an exception to that, of course. Being a bit hard. So I got Guppy's Paw already. And a troll bomb, which I can't get away from, and then I planted my own bomb, which kind of sucked. I'm actually going to take Guppy's Paw with me, and I'm going to actually keep it with me, because I don't have anything else for it now. But it will keep me in permanent curse state, which, like I said, isn't actually a damage up, it's a damage multiplier. So if you can manage it, it's a great thing to have, because it might not be like times two, but it's like 1.5 times your current damage, which will bring your damage up past maximum. And not many items can actually bring your damage up past maximum like that can. So I might as well fight the boss right away because I might get a deal with the devil. And it's just a Larry Jr. Larry Jr. is actually one of the harder first floor bosses just because Larry Jr. can be so unpredictable at times. So basically what I'm trying to say is I really like to keep my distance from him. You might also notice, and a lot of people don't mention this, he does regain health from eating his own poo. So you kind of want to keep the room fairly poo free. Not to mention the poo can drop money, so you might want to kill it just for that. Money, spirit hearts, any of that stuff. Um, the luck up, I've heard the luck up just affects item drops per room, but I don't quite believe that. I think it also affects um, item drops in general, so the how good your items are, it depends on it. 
Let's see what the devil has to offer. Um, nothing that I can actually afford, because that will take away all my spirit hearts. And one of those is a bomb, which is kind of a problem for me. Mystery pill will definitely not be bad. Like, it won't necessarily be good, but it will definitely not be bad. So I'm going to pop that right away. See what it is. Um, friends till the end. Not a huge advantage, and I wish I had a bomb. And that, that box didn't give you a troll bomb. It's kind of really trolly, considering that was my boss item that just gave me a troll bomb. But oh well. I should be able to beat Mum's heart as is so far. So basically, what have we learned this episode so far? Um, destroy all tinted rocks. Don't get hit by aggressive flies on rooms like I just did twice. Um, Horror of Babylon is great if you can manage to go all spirit hearts. And that's basically it, to be honest with you. Oh yes, and that Larry Jr. recovers his health. So, got Vampire Bat, um, entirely useless. Unfortunately, it's just, uh, every one out of every, I think, six or seven kills gives you one half heart health. But it only works if you have red hearts, and I'm currently rolling on entirely spirit hearts. I'm not even sure if I've unlocked the Polaroid yet, so not sure if I'll get that permanent invincibility on the lower floors. I'd still say it was worth it for the Horror of Babylon state, though, and being able to stay permanently in this cursed state. A cursed state. I always take a bit of damage on this room. Um, I accidentally just popped the Empress card, which I think does re-multiply my damage, but it was kind of a waste in that circumstance. Ten extra bombs, very useful. I will easily fight a few um, silkworms for this. No no contest there. Maggots, I guess I should call them. They aren't really silkworms. Yeah, they're silkworms. Let's do that instead. Okay, fly guys, and I'm pretty sure the next thing that comes up is turrets. So, pretty easy room. Definitely worth the 10 bombs. Always check the mob trap room at least, or try to heal yourself to check it, because it will really, really help you in general. Especially if there's an item in there, you can re-roll that if you've gotten the D6 yet. Or if there's anything else in there. Now I'm, I'm going to kind of like complete this game with you. This is a lead up to Binding of Isaac Rebirth, which is going to be the 16-bit remake. So I'm going to try to 100% the game, get Platinum God, like I never managed to because when I could get Platinum God, the game was entirely bullshit. Entirely bullshit. <laughs> Let's see. Conga liners can sometimes be a pain in the ass because they're basically like Larry Jr., who I said was unpredictable, but there's more of them, so. Very easy not to run into Larry Jr.'s tail, very hard not to run into tons of conga liners. Item room, I get holy water, again, very useless. If I get hit, it, it basically acts as um, number, not number one, um, lemon mishap, which just pisses, pisses on the floor and does damage to any enemies who walk on it. I accidentally killed both the neutral flies shit, so they're both after me. And neutral flies are ridiculously durable. So hopefully I get another damage upgrade here. Let's check it out. Um, this is Gertie Jr. A kind of a tough draw for this floor. One of the secrets for Gertie Jr. if you have a decent fire rate is to just stay still and then he won't hit you. But if you fire shots directly at him, he should slow down enough that you should be able to dodge fairly easily. But then eventually he gets into this type of pattern, so... Best just to use your reflexes to your advantage. I can't really give you much advice for that because that boss is hard. Stem cells, one extra heart, three extra spirit hearts. Keeps me in the permanent curse state. And I will be moving on to the secret room and shop since I have enough keys to visit both. And I'm not saving keys for the chest at this moment. Because, like I said, I can't actually get there. So I have 15 cents total, so I'm, I thought I wasn't going to make it to the amount of money I needed to go to the shop, but apparently I will. Apparently. And I, there's also a self-sacrifice room. Like I said, I always visit those, because that is the whole reason I have this whole guppy paw permanent curse state thing going on for me right now. And I get flying? Brimstone. Okay, Brimstone again. Every one of my runs is going to be Brimstone. <laughs> I actually wouldn't have taken that if I knew it was Brimstone. So, I'm not going to take Brimstone every time I see it because it's just not my favorite item. But I do have decent damage now. I have basically won against Mum's Heart. I can kind of speedrun the rest of this. Got the map. 
Um, might as well pick up the tarot card. I can't afford the tarot card. Might as well put out the fire since that does very easy with brimstone. So I, I'm sorry I took that. I didn't mean to. Um, brimstone runs over and over again can get boring and my last three runs have all been brimstone runs. So in the future I'm just going to avoid picking it up. Even if that sounds stupid and not like a good gameplay strategy. Whatever. Hopefully I'll get D6 soon and I'll be able to... Um, I'll be able to... What damaged me there? I didn't even notice there were flies. Okay, well, whatever. Kind of pissed off at that half-hearted damage. Very easy to get away with these guys for my current speed. I could use a few tears up though because I'm charging this rather slowly compared to what I would normally like. Okay, I did some damage to the champion so I should be able to kill it in one more brimstone. And both of those in one brimstone as well. Unfortunately, I bought the map and then I got a uh, floor, which the map does not benefit me in the slightest. No, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Two more left, and I got them both in one shot. Oh, I was hoping for a pro interception there. Took a bit too much damage on this on this floor. Um, probably shouldn't have, but. You know me and my damage. I don't really. I'm not really that cautious. I have gotten all the achievements for doing floors with no damage, and then I was like, okay, enough of that. Now I can just take damage however much I want. So basically, the advice for this run is entirely done. Um, there's a shop. Is there greed in there? No, compass. Could really use that compass. But in order to understand where the secret room is, I'm going to have to try to memorize the map bit, which I have not been doing so far, and that was really stupid. I'm going to put that out just in revenge. Oh, um, this is actually a fairly tough draw for caves. Generally, the rooms don't get as hard as leapers in the caves. Wasn't expecting anything to actually be there, so this is blank room, then is there an up and a down? No, just an across. So none of these rooms are going to actually have have um, a secret room adjacent. Although this might. Yes, this one could have a... Um, well, not this one, the last one I was in. Could have a secret room adjacent. Let's get this guy to pop up, kill him. Oh, ah. Uh, damn. Damn. Boss trap room there could be very useful. But I'm first going to check this. Damn. Um, I will definitely take that if only because, like I said, I can't get bad pills right now, so it is very much worth it. Because pills can, like, make or break a cane game very easily. So if you ever have a chance to get extra pills as cane, take them. There we go. Destroyed that. Destroyed this. And one last Larry Jr. Very easy with brimstone. Also with piercing shots. So one friend's till the end. One mystery pill, which is tears up. I was really hoping for that, actually. Another speed up, and another mystery pill. Telepills takes me to a room I haven't been to, but fortunately, my familiar, my friendly flies took care of all that. I don't really care about the secret room. I'm just gonna go for the boss immediately and try to kill him as fast as possible. There we go. So the amount of damage I'm doing is mostly because of... Can't take either of those. Mostly because of the permanent curse state I'm in, as well as the one damage upgrade. I shouldn't be doing that much, but permanent per curse state, huge advantage. Okay, now I can see the secret room, so I may be able to visit the shop on this floor. Let's check it out. Greed could be good. That means at least there is no greed in the shop, because there can only be one mini boss per floor. So, useful to know. And I'm going to explore towards the nearest turn terminus, and then I'm basically going to try to speed run this. I say I usually play as efficiently as possible, but this time I have basically won, so I see no point. I only need one more cent to visit the shop, though, so maybe I will play as efficiently as possible. Nothing at the terminus, surprisingly enough. I will go over here, though, just to have the extra time to destroy things. The extra chance of drops, so that's double my money. And that will take me up to 30 cents, but I'm going to wait until I get to the shop to use that. Just never pop those right away. Only pop them when you need to finally use your money. Unless, of course, you just want to get rid of them to keep a better card. And there are better cards. Um, the Emperor, the Sun, are very much more worth keeping than those. 
There we go. It's an easy room. Always try to line those guys up for a chain reaction. It makes things a lot easier on yourself. Now, this is a bit of a tough room, if only because of that, um, asshole green, green, um, green turret guy. You can actually stay out of their range, but only if you stay in the corners, so a bit hard to manage. Um, I do often spend on, on fortune teller machines, because an extra trinket can really make the game. But I'm not going to do that now, because it's going to cost me a key, and oh, and I'm going to screw up in other places without having to spend my keys on random shit. Let's see what it says. Two of clubs, two of clubs doubles your bombs. 30 bombs total. So I can now very easily use bombs in combat. Um, two of diamonds. I'm going to use the two of diamonds. I'm also going to bomb this. So that'll make a bridge for me, so I don't have to use a key. Since I have 30 bombs and 6 keys. Flat penny will give me any extra keys. Oh, Mom's Pearl. There we go. That is the extra spirit heart trinket. So that increases the amount of spirit heart drops you get, but not like the miter. A bit less than that. That was very lucky for me. They all lined up perfectly. So that's not always going to happen for anyone. Even in that room layout, sometimes they all just scatter way too much. Got to try to line these guys up. Okay, one more. Spiders kind of make me most nervous when I have brimstone because they're, they kind of pose the biggest threat. There we go. I've also gotten Mum's purse now and a tarot card, which is the devil. I'm... I always forget whether the devil increases my damage for one room. There's also the death card, which damages all enemies for one room. But I might as well come back here and pick up the flat penny as well, now that I have Mum's coin, Mum's purse. And move on. Moving on, moving on, as if nothing really matters. So I also have a judgment. I probably don't have enough money to actually pay him off. But I do have enough money to apparently get a bomb off of him, and I may be able to come back. Bomb and a key. May be able to come back, so let's see. Into the item room. Um, Mr. Boom. I'm not actually going to keep Mr. Boom, but I am going to use it to blow up this slot machine here. And then take this back. That will also take Mr. Boom out of the item pool, and Mr. Boom is basically a horrible item. Um, I'm also going to go back and blow up all the other slot machines. You can see several of them on this floor. What was to the south again there? Just a regular room? I'm going to clear that out before I move on. If nobody minds too much, just for the chance of getting some extra money to give to Judgment. Judgment often gives HP upgrades and has a fairly good item pool of zone. He's basically an item room minus a few of the worst items that I've never seen him drop before. So, time to do a tiny bit of backtracking. I won't do this too much in the future. Especially when I'm this overpowered already. But I was going to show you guys proper play, and I still plan to show you guys proper play. So let's blow this up. Two cents and a bomb, so that makes up for that. And a key, because I have the flat penny right now. As you remember, flat penny does give you keys when you pick up pennies. A very useful trinket, especially when you are not as lucky as me and slightly lower on pennies. And I'm also going to blow up the fortune teller. Hopefully a couple more cents, and maybe spirit heart? No spirit heart. But I did get a couple extra keys. So I used a lot of keys in that situation, but I gained more keys than I lost. And I also got seven cents, which could mean an item for me from Judgment here. Portable slot machine. It was all worth it. Okay. Hopefully that takes it out of the item pool. I'm not sure if that works for the slot machine, though. That was a horrible drop. So war is a bit of a tough draw, especially since I really don't want the cube of meat. And I really just don't want to be fighting war. He can be a bit less predictable than the other horsemen, and he has the threat to do a bit more damage. Other than death, he is basically the hardest of the horsemen of the apocalypse. Fortunately, when he's in this state, though, he is rather pathetic. And especially if you have enough speed, he just has no chance at all. As you can see there, almost got hit, but I knew I would have had, would have him down in time. And he is dead. Also unlocked Book of Revelations. I have talked to you at great length about Book of Revelations. I don't like it. A lot of people really do. I don't. So, you can listen to whoever you want there. I'm not sure who have you seen playing better, me or them. 
Answer me that. Mr. Doubting Mufasa. I don't know. <laughs> Blow up this heart. Um, tinted rock. Or spirit heart and bomb. That paid for itself. One more guy. Pick up key. Move on. Probably should have gone to the secret room right away. Oh, I hate this room. I hate this these, this enemy specifically. Fortunately, this guy doesn't have much of a chance. And I can blow up this rock, get myself an extra spirit heart. And move on by. A boss trap room that I can go into. That's the other advantage at being at no health. And keeping Guppy's paw is that you can go into all the boss rooms. I probably shouldn't have traded that health right away just because it was kind of put me at risk because I zelda the item for a bit. Held it over my head. But... Peep is also a fairly hard draw for a boss trap room, except he's just what shows up in the depths, so you kind of have to be like, shit, well, that's my luck. Especially if you want the upgrade. And I really don't think I'm going to be losing three spirit hearts on this fight, so I should be fine. Well, his second eye just came out. Always remember to hold the full length of brimstone on the enemy, because if you don't, you'll waste a lot of damage and a lot of time. So one more scent. I'm not going to bother getting that other scent. Here is another judgment. I will probably visit him if I get enough money. I'll visit this um this secret room right now. See it on the map because of course I have the map. Also got tons of keys, way more keys than I need. I would probably actually take this room into the cathedral and all the way to Blue Baby if I had the option. Let's wait for these guys to line up and kill them both. Run through. So I don't want to fight the boss right away. Normally I would, but this time it is mum and I cannot back out of a mum fight. So that means it is time to backtrack. I already have 14 cents, but I could actually use more before I decide what I want to spend it on. I'm going to plant a bomb there. I may accidentally kick it out of the way, but I have bombs to spare, so shouldn't be a big deal. Killed a lot of these guys already. They should die in one more charged brimstone hit. One and two and three, apparently. Thought it would be done two there. And moving on left, always heading to the terminals. And right now I'm just clearing out every floor because why not? Believe it or not, um, Mama's Boy is the first achievement I got for taking no damage on the floor. So I actually find the womb very easy because a lot of the pressure is over at that point. Radioactive Spider. This will increase my damage a ton because it's quad shot, but it will also make me really slow to charge, so I'm going to take it anyways. Um, and the only way it could be make this more broken is by getting Polyphemus, which I think I actually have to unlock because I have, I just remembered I haven't even done the challenge runs in this, officially speaking. Since I cleared my data, my data. Is it data or data? Somebody tell me. I don't really know. I don't know which is proper, the proper usage. There we go. According to cell phone companies, it's data. According to a lot of computer people, it is data. You can see I can really just sweep the brimstone now and kill absolutely everything in the room. Quad shot was a good pickup for that. And both the shop and the item room should be in this terminus over here. It's taking so long to fire, I keep thinking I'm going to fire, and then there we go. Got an extra pill there. Haven't actually had it yet, so let's see what it is. Bombs are key. So now I have 28 keys and 15 bombs. That is n not ideal, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. Anyone can see. Nothing really matters. Um, I'm just going to circle straight around until the brimstone is done. And no item room? Oh, I already went to the item room. Let's see what's in here. Ladder, I might as well not take. There are no crevices you can cross in the womb. So it becomes useless after, like, caves, basically. You only want to take it if you have plenty of money, so I will go visit Judgment, as I normally do. No, I haven't been checking for the super secret room, but I haven't had any means to, and it's just a waste of bombs if you don't know where it is. And the two things that can make you know where it is are, well, either having infinite amounts of bombs... Oops, I accidentally just blew up Judgment. Oh, well, maybe I'll find him later on. Maybe I'll be finding him later on. Forgot how easy the game is when you start out, though. Because it does actually gain in difficulty as you go on. As you can see, I'm doing a hell of a lot of damage. 
Um, unfortunately, I kind of misfired that. Let's see. There we go. She is almost dead already. But I kind of mischarged there. And again. So let's get one more shot in. And she gave me milk, which I can immediately change into more HP. So I have HP off the screen now. All in spirit hearts, of course. So if I lose this, I have no way of replenishing it, really. And then I will head to the terminus. No more, no more item rooms. No more ba No more um, shops. So I might as well just try as hard as I can to. So long charging. Okay, there we go. Might as well just rush the corners, the terminuses, the termini. Actually, going to bomb my way through these two walls because that is the quickest way to a terminal. Super greed here, not big deal. Should only take two shots to finish off. There we go. Got tons of money, got tons of keys. I'm not gonna need this for anything, so I'm not even sure why I'm picking it up. Why I am bothering. And I can't bomb my way through there, so I don't know what that's all about. These guys are a bit of a pain in the ass because no matter how much damage you're doing, they will do their split thing. A bit like, um, what's his name that way? <laughs> I forget his name already. I fought him twice. Envy. Envy the boss. Joker will take me to the deal with the devil room. Which, um, it may be worthwhile. Let's check it out. Deal with the angel. Gives me the Bible. I could instantly kill Mum's heart. Not gonna do it. Um, don't feel like insta-killing Mum's heart. So, not gonna do it. It's very unlikely that Mum boss is going to actually be here. I say that because it's rarely on a terminal that's down from a single room with another room to the left. It's generally in a room where it's like straight through. If that makes any sense. See how there's like a room and then another room in the same direction? Yeah, it's kind of always in that type of room. We're usually in that type of room. I'm not going to say always because that is entirely untrue, even according to my experience. I don't want to claim that. It's not something I want to claim. I'm not ready to claim it. I'm not ready to claim my baggage. Took out two of them immediately. Um, vaginal silkworms are not much of a problem if you have a very high-powered brimstone. God damn. Okay. That was a bit of a tough dodge. So not in this terminal. Let's check this terminal here. I'm almost killing Gertie Jr. in one hit with this quad shot charge thing that I have going on. And so apparently it is in the very furthest terminal, which kind of sucks. Almost killing two Gertie Juniors in one hit now. Oh, 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 come on. Come on, guys. Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. Somehow got out of that unscathed. That would have been very hard if I had not had the items I currently have. So always strafe across all these guys at once, if possible, just to kind of induce them to fire. And then you can get the hell out of there before the troll bomb blows you up. And you can almost be at mum. Okay, these guys are fairly easy if you just watch where they're hitting at the bottom and avoid being there. Because they only hit in one place with all their segments. So if you try dodging in the middle of the room, they're a lot harder. Okay, and mum's heart... Or, no, sorry, not mum's heart. Um, dub Loki. Should be very easy, all things considered. It's basically like fighting two Lokis in one room. Almost killed both of them. I did take damage, which is too bad. Got the deal with the angel room again, which I do not want, because it is just the Bible. Well, actually, might as well take the Bible. I'm not going to use it on Mum, but I'm not going to have a chance to use the Guppy's Paw again, and I'd rather just take this for now. So, if I'm very lucky, it could be right here, but it's not. I'm gonna use the Bible, I'm gonna fly. He cannot actually fly over walls. So this is a huge advantage for me, because this room would have been a major pain in the ass. And this is the exact reason I took the Bible, not to insta-kill mom, but to just get by rooms like this. Oh, and one more, one more, one more, one more, come on. There we go. So at least we know it's not there. Now where I do think it is, is, oh, a bit of a tough room here. Diglets have a lot of health. Unfortunately not enough health to stand up to a quad shot brimstone with um, curse state. 
or double cursed date as I now have a high priestess card. And moving downwards and bombing my way into this terminal, which is where I think the mum's heart boss fight will be. I'm just judging that by exactly what I was saying earlier. Unfortunately, I let Larry Jr. hit me of all things. Um, I also shouldn't have let him hit me there, but I thought my brimstone would be charged by then. A long charging brimstone can really be a death with a death sentence because you never know when it's done. And there we go. I was entirely right about the boss fight, as I normally am. And I have one more cyst to pop. There we go. Done. Kill this guy, and then it's on to the Mum's Heart boss fight, which I anticipate being no problem at all. Let's see. Just got to get in line with these guys, kill both of them. Now the thing is, can I charge in time to kill all the enemies that she drops? Um, apparently just barely. Let's keep trying then. And she's already firing um, permanent bombs, so no chance of bosses coming out. Bosses usually do spawn in this fight. And then... Game over. Bag of pennies appeared in the basement. I have unlocked Judas. I thought I had to beat Satan to unlock Judas, so that's kind of weird. And then chest. I will show you the ending number two. Second ending. Where I find the Fez. Alright. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Binding of Isaac. Sorry it was a bit more laid back than usual. And I'm also kind of sorry it was a brimstone run. But it was fun anyway. So, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.